Hi guys, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm doing a beginner's tutorial. Sometimes you replace a sky, and beginners sometimes when they do that think, okay, that's it, and that's all you need to do. But that's not really true because the sky affects everything below on the ground. So I'm going to attempt to show you a simple way on how to get the colors of the sky or the reflection of the sky on the ground. So let's get started. So I pulled this from stock photos. Um, it's Unsplash. And I have, I have the uh, two photos that I'm going to use in the description below. And I'm having some issues with Unsplash. It's, I don't have a problem with Pixels or Pixabay, but here's the second photo I want. And I will try to drag it on. And it, nothing seems to happen. So um, if you have that same problem, just double click on it and it will appear. And in fact, that's the link that I have before. And you can just right click and say copy. Then you can go right back to Affinity and do Control or Command V and paste it in. And that's what we have right there. So I'm going to pull out a little bit. Now, I don't really need most of this. I'm just doing this as a quick example. It's not a perfect thing, but I'm just going to probably select, uh, say, maybe this much of the sky right here. And when you make a selection, don't forget that if you pull something in and it says image, you can't copy and paste it. So you have to right click and say rasterize. And if you rasterize it, then you can copy and paste it. You can do control or command C and, and then V to paste, or you can do control or command J which just puts it on a new layer, and then Command D to deselect, and then see, that's all you need there. So I'm going to now get rid of that photo because I don't need it, and I'm going to hide the sky. Let's take the original photo. This is really not a selection tutorial, so I'm probably not going to get all the details, but I'm just going to give you a down and dirty selection just to show you how this could work. So I'm choosing my selection brush tool, and I'll make the make it larger. I'm using my right bracket to make it larger and I'm going to start just selecting. And you can see it pretty much does a good job. It didn't get the little things and I'll show you with the close-up. And like it did not get the crane, it did not get any of that. And I probably don't care uh, because in this tutorial it's not about the little details, it's really about the sky. What I do want to make sure I do get, I'm looking here closely, is maybe stuff like in here. So I'll get a real, I'll get a close up there. And I will, I'll make the brush, whoops, I'll make my brush smaller. And I'm using my left bracket for that. And I'm just going to, whoops, I'm going to add. Option gets it back. So that gave me a little more there. And maybe this in between here, which I'm not really sure I need, but I'm going to try and get that. And do I really want to get it in here? I could try. Let me get a real close up, make my brush really tiny and see if I can get this little spot right here. And I think kind of we're okay. I'm not even going to take all of this right now. So now what I want, what I want to do is I need to mask it. So in order to mask it, I just click right down here because of the selection. But I don't want to mask the sky because that's what I selected. I want to mask what's underneath it. So what I'm going to do is select Invert Selection. And I'm also going to Refine. Refine just kind of smooths it out. And once again, I don't care about the cranes. I don't care about a lot of that because this tutorial is not about selection. It's about replacing the sky. And I'm just going to hit apply. So now my selection is below and now I'm going to mask. And you can see that um, I masked out the sky. And then I'll control or command D to deselect. So now let's turn the sky on. Bring the sky behind. And I'm just going to stretch it out like that and decide how much of it I want to show or how far down I want it to be. And I'm thinking that's not bad. 
Now, so you just, now, so people sometimes, beginners sometimes go, oh, look, I have a new sky. It's really nice and that's fine. And that's all they do. But that's not what you do. You can't just leave the sky like that. I'm going to make this go down just a touch more. And you can't leave the sky like that because the colors in the sky actually affect this and they don't look like they go together. So what you need to do is one way. This is so many different ways. Affinity Photo is fantastic and there's so many different ways. So I'm going to just show you one way. But before I do, I just want to remind you to please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it really helps my channel and it gives me the incentive to create more videos. And if you find this tutorial useful, it takes two seconds to hit that button. And I thank you very much for that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to duplicate this um, new sky layer. So control or command J to duplicate it. I want to bring it to the top. And I want to do arrange, flip vertically. So now it's upside down. And I need to take that and move this down here somewhere. And that looks about right. So what I need to do now is take this mask, which was on the first one, duplicate that, and bring that up and to the right. So I'm putting the mask on there. So one thing you need to know, if you mask something and you try to move it, the mask shows up and moves with it. You do not want that. So you want to undo that. And up here, you must select lock children. So lock children means now if I move this, the mask stays where it needs to be. So it looks like ridiculous right now. I know because you can't see anything. But if I change the blend mode to overlay, now we're getting closer to what we want. It's very strong, and you can lower that if you want. Lower the opacity. Whoops, I'm going to select it. And lower the opacity to where you think you need to be. And that's kind of interesting, and I like that. And you can just leave it at that. You can decide what kind of opacity you want with that. Another thing I really do like to do, and I'm going to bring this the opacity way up just to make sure you can see it, is I... I also want to, at this point, when I decide where I want that sky to be, like I said, you can move this down further so you can have more color. And yet we're not leaving it like that. I know that looks really bad. So now if I want to take that pixel layer, because remember, reflection is not perfect because everything is not on the same plane. So what you do now, if I take that pixel layer, I can go up to liquefy. And I'm just going to start moving things around a little bit like this. And you can use your judgment. Like if I thought that maybe I wanted more of this light over here, I could slide it a little bit that way. And I can make some, just some wavy kind of reflections here. And then I'll say apply. Now it's still too strong and I can now lower the opacity. So I'm going to start dragging it down and deciding how much. I'm just going to try a little bit. But I still, when I'm looking at it, I don't feel it's completely right. I feel like there's a darkness here and I'm not getting it. So I'm going to also duplicate that one more time. Whoa, and that's pretty strong. <laughs> and let's try, instead of overlay, let's add maybe, let's try darker. And I, the, I like, I think I like the darker because look at the, the actual ships now. When I undo that, see how white they are? And they shouldn't be that white in, in nighttime. I think they should have a little bit more of the color. And once again, I can lower the opacity or raise it. I don't want it so much. So everything is in moderation. So let's get a close up here so we can see what we're doing here. And you can see the difference. See, that's the before and after. And that's before the other one. So if we could take these off, that's what it originally looked like. And if you looked at that with the sky, it just did not fit in. It really did not. When you're doing photo manipulation, think of the whole photo in real life and how it would reflect. This right now, if I just change the sky, and many beginners do this, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look like it belongs there. But now we add these two. 
and look at that and you can still play with these if you want you can change you can use curves or you can lower see how I'm lowering that a little bit more and I think that makes a much better photo so again this is a beginner's tutorial there are way more advanced tutorials on this I think it's a good start when you're doing things step back walk away and come back and look at it and make sure it looks realistic to you so I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you did, please click like and subscribe, and have a great day. Thanks so much, and be safe. Bye.